Hey there, Tachlis in Tel Aviv. Alyssa here. So, yeah, incognito, because I just came from the... No, the hat might have to stay on. Um, incognito. Um, just came from the labs. So, I want to get more flowy here in Tachlis and really, really say what I want to say without having to give it a title and to have the beginning, middle, and end, I guess that would make it more interesting and probably more comprehensive, but I say if you flow with me and go with me, we'll eventually get there and why not enjoy the journey as opposed to the goal that we need to get to. So, that being said, dear Mr. Hot Israeli Guy. There's so much I want to say to you, but can I just ask you, please step away while I'm getting a blood test and someone has a needle in my arm pulling blood and not successfully. Please don't stand over my shoulder. I see you're hot. You're great. You think you're better than me. You're not. You're VIP just like all of us are, but do me the favor. Don't treat me like a soldier, okay? You did the army, I did not, maybe you're still in that mentality, I'm not. When people are getting blood, it is something between the person that's injecting them and the person that's getting the needle in their arm. So don't stand over my damn shoulder. That said, wow, we have just been through so much lately. This last week of just just too much terror and hate all over the world, right? It's just awful. Wow. Can you imagine this poor little 13-year-old girl? I know my face is, but how can you stab a 13-year-old sleeping little kid? And then two days later, shooting like mafia style 20 rounds into a car with kids and shooting the father dead like an execution was another attack and they went into a cafe and they kept the people for 12 hours and they they slaughtered people the free world has some serious serious problems going on you know, and every time I write, because everybody is showing pictures of their kids or happy times at the beach, and I guess I could do that too, but I don't know. It, the news is bothering me. Is it bothering anybody else? And is it an obsession of mine? I don't know. I, I just think that, like, maybe when when you don't have kids and you're alone and, and your family is far away, and I don't know, I... I worry. I worry about the free world. I also worry about the immediate world that I live in because I, I'm really confused. And I don't know where I stand on this issue. There is a country of Israel. It has borders. And then there are these other borders. All different sets of borders. And then based on that, you're supposed to choose your border. So... I really, really feel for the people of Hebron, and I get it. 7,000 Jews to 150,000 Arabs, wow, that's putting a lot of troops in harm's way. At the same time, I really am impressed by your courage and your strength. You guys are not just the buffer zone, you are the shooting range, and they practice on you. I'm not too sure that, that anybody inner of, inner of Israel has any right to make any kind of judgment about where anybody lives within the state of Israel. It seems that putting excuses and blame on others is a really good way to relieve yourself of any such thing. So in the bigger world, good morning Israelis, in the bigger world, everybody blames the state of Israel. It doesn't matter where you live. So... Get over that and come together as a whole, number one. And number two, give the people a little credit that are living and pretty much creating the framework of your country. Because if you want the borders of Israel to lie within Tel Aviv, on the outskirts of Tel Aviv, we will have a very, 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 very 
very small country of anything at all if we keep going and eliminating those people that have created our framework, our misgeret. I wouldn't live there. I get it. Avraham bought it for, what was it, 4,000 shekel. I, I get it. I get the area of Hebron. I've been there. And it's super scary. And I wonder about people that can live there, that put their family there, their children there, and live a good life, I think. I don't know. I wonder what their children think about living there and if they're afraid or... But that's not really any of my business, is it? That's where they choose. And if they're allowed to live there by the domain of the country of Israel, then we need to support them. And as much as we get upset and about an attack in Tel Aviv, we should get very, very upset about another attack within our country. Kiryat Alba, Hevron, they're in our country, the country of Israel. Deal with it. Because if we don't start being one big whole, we can be one big nothing even quicker. I'm sick of it. You know, you go out and then you want to say that terrorism is the same in New York, in Brussels, oh, in California, Orlando, and then you keep putting Tel Aviv. Why not add Kirat Arba, Netanya? Because all of these cities have been under attack. Did you know that we also got rockets in Shtelot in the last couple of days? And all that could come to mind was they kept showing the picture of the school that was actually hit and thank God, there were no kids there. But if a bomb drops in a quiet forest, and no one sees it, and no one hears it, did it happen? So we don't make a big deal when the bombs drop and they don't affect anything. You hear a little bit in the news when all of a sudden a school is affected. Why are we not freaking out every time a bomb is dropped on our country? In our misgeret, in our, in, our, in our borders. Makes no sense to me. Again, to that guy, when I'm getting my blood test, back off, dude. Because I am a little stressed out. And I don't need it. Find your joy in the honor and in the memory of a great man, Elie Wiesel. Just find your joy. Live in your joy and be your joy. We have lost a light. That means we all need to work a little bit harder to enlighten ourselves and others. Be the change.